What an incredible privilege it is to, to welcome you guys to basically our last message of 2019. Um, sending you warm greetings here from Franschhoek, where we are at the beautiful support center, making use of uh, Schaefer Franschhoek's beautiful church building. And uh, it's such a joy for me today to be able to, to share a couple of thoughts with all of you guys as uh, part of our wonderfully, uh, beautifully uh, diverse Schaefer church family. Uh, you know, one of the greatest joys that I've had as the um, apostolic team leader of our church family was to be able to, to travel uh, to our different congregations over the last two and a, and a bit years. And I must tell you, every time I, I end up at a congregation, every time I spend time with the leaders, every time I have the privilege of worshiping with uh, another congregation, I come away feeling so incredibly blessed. Uh, that God has chosen to, to put us together, that He has chosen to uh, handpick us from different uh, cultural and ethnic backgrounds, that He has handpicked and chosen us, and that He has called us from different um, educational backgrounds, different uh, worldviews, and that He's busy just creating something so beautiful, something so special, uh, that I think very often if we are a part of it, if we are a part of um, sort of the inner workings and we go from Sunday to Sunday, we can lose sight of the beauty of uh, what the Lord is busy with. And I just want to remind us today of this, this beautiful uh, portion of Scripture in Acts 2 verse 17 that I'm going to read for you guys, and I'm sure that all of you know it, but I want to share this uh, with you. Uh, Acts 2 verse 17 says that it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Um, what is um, significant about this verse is that, of course, we know that uh, there's a quote from the Old Testament from the book of Joel, and um, God promised that there was going to come a time that he would pour out his spirit. In other words, he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. We, we see within this verse, the context also is upon all generations, old and young, all flesh. And so if you are made of flesh and bone, that verse is applicable to you. The Holy Spirit is poured out upon all of us. And Jesus, Jesus made it possible for, for all of us who call upon the name of Jesus, who have been born again by the spirit of God. And we are fantastic candidates for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I've become aware of, of what I want to call a, a rumbling, a stirring in the Spirit, where, where I begin to, to sense that God is once again ready to pour out His Spirit upon us. You know, this, this church family has its foundations and its roots and its origin within a, a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God in Stellenbosch, in, in the midst of uh, tremendous opposition, in the midst of circumstances that weren't always conducive for a, a very small and a very young church to flourish. And we did, and we did because of the power of the Holy Spirit within our midst. And, and I believe that God is once again wanting to pour out His Spirit upon us. And, and for that to happen, we need to come and position ourselves. Uh, we need to come and and, and bring our hunger, bring our desperation for God, the Holy Spirit, before Him once again. And, and, and I want to share with you just what I've begun to, to hear as I've traveled to the Netherlands and I've traveled to, to Burundi, the tremendous privilege of uh, being in the UK and in Namibia and, and right throughout South Africa. And as different as we are, as, as unique as we are as individual congregations as well, there's this common thread that just runs throughout each one of the congregations. And that is, of course, a, an increasing uh, boldness and understanding that Jesus is the center. Jesus is the focus. Jesus is the one holding us together. It's, it's not an organization. Uh, it's not the apostolic team. It's, it's not the local pastor and the elders holding the churches together. All of that is important. All of the structure is important. But what is holding our church family together is the fact that God is faithful to His Word. And He said that He's building His church. And He's building His church through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that enables us to hear God's voice and enables us also to hear God through one another. And I believe that's one of the greatest blessings God has given us. You know, not just to be able to to um, have tremendous tools in terms of discipleship, our encounters and our Bible school, our, our Sunday services. And of course, we've got access to so many different 
uh, online resources. But really, we can have a, uh, I believe, a relatively good relationship with God in, in isolation. But yet God has is, is called us to, to uh, enter into a deeper level, and that is to journey with one another. To, to journey within the context of, of this verse where we have sons and daughters that are prophesying, young men that are seeing visions, and old men that are dreaming dreams. In other words, a, a family that comes together where the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them, and the Holy Spirit enables them to listen to one another. The Holy Spirit enables them to interpret even those dreams and those visions, those prophecies that need to be prophesied, the dreams that need to be dreamt, the, the visions that need to be seen, they all need to be interpreted. They all need to be contextualized. They all need to be received. And so I believe that one of the greatest blessings God has given us is to be able to prophesy, is to be able to dream dreams, is to be able to have a vision, not in isolation, not in some vacuum somewhere where we theorize around these things and we theorize around changing the world and we, and we blog around changing the world and we Facebook about changing the world, but we can actually live it out. Uh, small steps for some of us, big steps for others, but we can live it out in community. We can live it out together. And as I've been traveling, I've been sensing this, this, this rumbling, this, this stirring, and I've been sensing it in uh, weird places where I hear of, of couples and even individuals that are taking massive risks to, to invite vulnerable children into their homes and, and they foster and they adopt them. As, as I see professional people who are working so hard at, at being the best that they could possibly be prof professionally and, and uh, making sure that they, they represent Christ uh, in an effective way in their workplace and and yet afterwards, after hours, without any pay, without anybody coming to uh, manipulate them, they give off their time and they give off their skills. And together with other professional people, they make a massive dent in, in alleviating poverty and, 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 and putting structures in place that would prevent our little ones from, from being abused. I, I hear those stories in our different congregations. I, I hear sounds of, of cultural diversity as as the gifted musicians that God has given us in almost every congregation as they begin to have the songs flow from, from their hearts and off their pens and the gifts that God has given them. And those beautiful sounds together form this beautiful, amazingly diverse sound. Diverse on the one hand and yet one on the other. A sound of hunger and a passion for Christ and the name of Christ. And as those songs get released, I, I see so many new albums being released. Um, I see so many new artists coming to the fore, releasing their paintings and their books. And, and I hear something of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we are beginning to become comfortable with the fact that God has chosen to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, that God has chosen not one man, not one woman to have the final say with regards to where we are heading as a church family, but for each one of us to have the liberty, the glorious liberty as sons of God to hear from God, to hear what God is saying to us and to collectively submit that to one another. I've, I've been sensing this as, as I've been hearing sounds of, of people who, who who very successful in their own right decide to prayerfully and courageously step out and resign from that career that they have been pursuing in order to follow the voice of God. As God is leading them to not just uh, live to, to make a living, but to live to make a difference. Uh, I sense the, the sound of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as I, as I hear of our mission teams that are going to, to foreign cultures uh, across the globe, but at the same time, also our mission teams that are, are going to the cultures on the other side of the road in our own communities. I, I hear the sound of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as I begin to, to hear and, and see of our, our children who are baptized in, in water and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and then their friends that they have invited come and they share in the celebration and get filled with the Holy Spirit as well. And so... I am in my spirit so excited about what I sense God is doing in our church family. And I believe that God is, 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 is calling us. And part of the, the reason why He's pouring out His Spirit upon us again is because He's calling us to a place where we return to the mandate, to the calling that He has 
given us to steward. And that is to, to really live with a passionate commitment to seeing nations and generations being impacted by the good news of Jesus Christ. And whether that is in our South African context, or whether in Namibia or in the UK or the rest of Africa or in Europe, wherever you might find yourself, I believe that there is stirring in all of our hearts this, this knowledge that God has been journeying with us. He's been faithful. He has been guiding us. He's been uh, healing our wounds. And now there's there's a rumbling, there's an excitement, there's, there's even a divine frustration that's beginning to stir in our hearts as we understand that God didn't just call us to live for ourselves. He, he didn't just call me to, to live for myself and for my own family as beautiful and as important and as big a priority as my own family is. He didn't just call me to, to live and to pour out my energy into my own local congregation as beautiful and as important and as bigger priority as that local congregation is, but he has called us to be part of a bigger family. And that together, collectively, as we come together, we can amplify our capacity to prophesy. We can amplify our capacity to speak into the social ills of our time. We can amplify our capacity to translate the gospel to different generations and to different cultures. And I want to encourage you as we as we gear up towards the end of the year, and many of you will, will go on holiday, many of you will take a break from your, your daily routines and will take some time out to spend with God, that, that you will reflect upon this year, that you will reflect upon what God has done. And, and I know that for some of us, we will look back at this year and we will see that there were some goals maybe not achieved yet. There were some visions not, not realized yet, some dreams not fulfilled yet. Maybe some prophecies that we are still waiting to, to come true. But I want to encourage you with this. God knows and He has always known. God doesn't come to the end of this year and thinks, oh my goodness, I didn't know that Heinrich would have the dream and that dream wouldn't come true. I didn't know that he would have those goals and not be able to meet them. But he has worked provision into my life. He has worked comfort into my life. He has worked restoration into my life. He has worked everything that I need to be able to start 2020 with a fresh capacity. To say, God, if you want to prophesy, prophesy through me. God, if you want to dream a dream, dream it through me. God, if, if you want to... Cast a vision and cast it through me. And so I want to appeal to you to, to bring your capacity to receive from the Holy Spirit before him. As the, the Tishbite widow had to do, she had to come and she had to bring her utensils, the vats and the pots and the stuff that she had available to her at home. She had to bring it so that the oil could be multiplied. Um, bring what you have for God to come and multiply Bring what you have, because I believe that God is wanting to pour out fresh oil upon us. And this, this beautiful verse in um, Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 11, uh, builds onto this promise that God has given us, that He wants to fill us with hope. He wants to, to make us aware again of the fact that the Holy Spirit is the one that restores all things. He wants to fill us with a, a sense of um, excitement that the best is yet to come, that the best days for us as a shofar family still lie ahead of us. Uh, during our recent convergence, God confirmed it again. He says that He will do for us as He's done for us at the beginning, and He will do for us more than that. But with that hope also comes this um, understanding during this time, the days in which we are living, that we need to be hopeful, but at the same time we need to be vigilant. Um, to all of our, our friends in other parts of the world, uh, forgive me as I touch once again upon just the amazing story that we have witnessed with the return of our, our World Cup winning uh, rugby team. It has been an incredible encouragement to us. It has been a massive boost to, to us as a nation. And, and we understand the power of hope. We understand that, that God has, has given us an opportunity to to have even difficult conversations around culture and ethnicity and background and, and all of those things, to, to have it not within an atmosphere that is divisive and an atmosphere that we want to make us feel threatened by one another or by our differences, but to be able to have those conversations within a hopeful environment, within a faithful environment, that we are truly stronger together. That God gives us an opportunity as the church, I believe, to hope before people, hope that doesn't pass away as the memory of a, 
of a good sporting tournament passes away, but I hope that increases day by day as we continue to live out the gospel that God has given us. We are bearers of hope. But the thing that struck me about our, um, our national rugby team was this, that yes, they were filled with hope. Yes, they had a dream. Yes, they had a vision, but they were also vigilant. They also understood the things that they could not allow in their midst. They couldn't allow any lack of transparency. They couldn't allow any mistrust. They couldn't allow anybody coming into the team and not pulling their weight. It had to be an environment where everybody was committed to say, we are putting the team first before the needs of the individual. And I believe that that is what God is holding before us as well, is to say that, that, that God, we once again want to live for something more than just their own dreams, more than just their own self actualization We want to live for the glory of your kingdom. And in Ephesians 6 verse 12, Paul tells us and reminds us that yes, we're filled with hope, we're filled with the spirit of hope, but at the same time, we need to understand that we are in a wrestle. We need to understand that there's a battle ahead of us. And verse 12 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And so there's an armor that God has for us. And I want to encourage you not to go into this holiday, not to go into this end of the year season with so much materialism and, and so many things clamoring for our attention, unguarded. Let's remain faithful. Let's remain hopeful. But at the same time, let's remain watchful. I want to pray for us. Father, I thank you, God, that you have your hand upon us as a church family. I thank you for the diversity, God, of giftings and of leadership. I thank you for the diversity, God, of, of everyone represented in all of our congregations, Father. God, I bring before you every need and every prayer need, God, every crisis right now that our church family faces, Lord. And I thank you, God, that even though I might be unaware of so many of them, that you are aware of each and every one of them. Not only are you aware of them, God, but you have made provision for them as well. And so I pray hope over your people. I pray, God, that as we slow down towards the end of this year, as we take time out to rest, those of us who will be able to do so, that we will be refreshed and that we will, Lord God, receive a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit. God, that you will restore our faith where our faith might have received a knock, that you will restore our hope, Lord. God, I also thank you that we can stand in faith with everyone, Lord, that is trusting you for work, everyone that is trusting you, Lord God, for, for better opportunity to provide for their families, Lord. We stand in faith, Lord, with everyone that's trusting you for physical healing. We stand in faith, Lord, for everyone that is trusting you for relational healing. And we thank you that you are faithful to your promises, God. Thank you, Lord, that you have promised us that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. So we put our hope and we put our confidence in you. And we trust you, God, to remain hopeful and watchful right till the very end. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been such a great privilege to be able to share these few thoughts with you. I look forward to 2020 with you. I look forward to paying uh, your church a visit soon, as soon as I can. And much love from Nikki, from the kids and the rest of the apostolic team and all of us here at Support Center. We want to thank you for being part of this church family. May the Lord bless you. May his grace, his protection, the blood of Jesus cover you as you travel on the road. And may we together see God's kingdom come powerfully and mightily in our time. The Lord bless you. See you in 2020. Bye.